Jim Gazzolo, Heat Sawyer, downer of a week. First weekend, I guess. Yeah, you know, hey, it happens. It does happen. It happens. Very unfortunate, very disappointed, but life moves on and, and we got to get ready. There's a whole season left to play and we got to get ready to do it. The thing that I, and we, we talk a lot about raising the conference bar too. Mm -hmm. Conference did not have a good weekend. No, the conference is, you know, um, did not have a good weekend. Um, uh, you know, just when you go through the, the entire conference, um, you know, no one won a game outside of Houston Christian who won a, beat a Division II team. So um, the league is up for grabs. Um, and, you know, we just have to continue to get better. I think that uh, some of the things that, that happened on Saturday or Saturday night, I think, exposed some weaknesses. And now, obviously, we have the Gators coming up, so it would be hard to kind of fix them against That's, the Gators. Yes. But, but at the end of the day, um, we have a whole season left to play. Uh, we have a champion, you know, a league champion. I mean, you know, I, I laugh because people get so caught up in the one game, um, and it was a one well, non-conference game. So um, we live in a world of overreaction. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. We we have it here. We have it in Baton Rouge. Yeah, for you sure. have it in Gainesville, Florida. For sure. Hey, you have it in Clemson, South Carolina, right yeah. now. Oh, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. And you know, the thing is, is that you have overreaction. Sometimes on the positive way too, you win one game and then all of a sudden you, you know you're going to be world. You're the greatest team in the world. That's right. So it, it's why I always laugh, but it's why I, or you laugh at me, but I've always said this: it's why I don't read the paper and I don't go on message boards. I'm not on Facebook. I don't. Uh, read it's a good it thing you stay because at the end, I've always said you're never as bad as they say you are, and you're never as good as they say you are. No, and and we can recap the game a lot if you want to, but really, it came down to two plays you didn't make that were mm -hmm. there. Oh, for the sure. The first play of the game, you have a pro probably a touchdown, throw it into the ground. There's a play where you're up, you're actually up seven points. You have the ball midway through the third quarter, and you have a play where the kid falls down on defense, and if he hits the pass, that's a, that's a walk-in touchdown from 80 right. yards because right. there's nobody on that side of the ball, and you're up two touchdowns. It's a completely right. different game. So right. th there were opportunities there. You just, they took advantage of their opportunities. You didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's really it. But let's get into some of the other things. Okay. Um, crowd of 12,000 people. Mm -hmm. It was great. A very good crowd, <laughs> especially considering anybody who's considering walking up at, not, at 6.15 isn't going to come because we basically got hit by a monsoon for 25 <laughs> minutes. That's right. Uh, That's right. But the crowd, you look at that crowd, then you go down the road to UL, which is playing an in-state rival, and they only drew 18. Yeah. So you're not that, the separation is not that mm -hmm. great. Um, but can you keep that momentum going is the question. Um, I think to a certain point, I think that um, we've done some things inside the stadium that make it really family family friendly. Is that the Frosty Factory? We got Frosty Factory. We have the ice. Um, you know, we have the the snow cones, uh, tiki ice, and then we we brought in a bounce house as well. Like I, I mean, saw the bounce house. You know, so like it really we've tried to really target. You know the the fans family from 25, fan. 35 to to fifty years old. With well, young you targeted families. different family. You targeted two different markets. One hundred percent. Because this program lost a generation of people coming. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to win. You know, I mean, we yeah. can we can put all these things in there. People want to support a winner. Um, we have to go out and win games, especially at home. I, I was a little afraid the bounce house was going to bounce out of here at about six thirty <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when that wind was blowing. When that wind was blowing, though. Oh, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, you have to win. I mean, obviously that's the thing, but I think that there's a lot of people who didn't don't understand the two things that go on. One is Tarleton spent a lot of money on football. A ton. <laughs> they have a lot of money. That's they not an excuse. That's not, but that is the fact of you are in a arms race in football on all levels, not just FBS. Oh no. There is there is a lot of money out there that is going to football, mm -hmm. and you have to continue to try to raise that bar because yeah. that's what that's what wins. That When the Southland lo loses to the big sky like it did, that's a financial loss because Absolutely. they lost on the financial side mm -hmm. before the season even began, isn't it? 100%. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's frustrating at times, you know, for me because I hear from fans, well, well you know, the Tarleton, and I mean, who's, I mean, like, well, there's, there's 8,000 students. Uh, or excuse me, 18,000 18, students. Um, I don't even want to say on air what they're spinning in football because it would it would shock you. Um, they're they're in they're legitimate 
program that is on, they're, they're on a rocket ship yeah. because of this Texas A&M system. Their president is ultra aggressive. Um, they are putting more, I mean, they just, they spend more money and more money um, and they're going to continue to spend it. And uh, I, I, have, I was really, really impressed. I got a chance to spend some time with their president, Hurley, and Lon, their AD, um, and what they're doing. Um, you know, the new basketball arena that's going to be $100 million that they're building. I mean, they are a real player. Yeah. And um, make, make no mistake, it is because of money. And, and they put in about $100 million into football into their new facilities mm -hmm. Absolutely. just this year. Correct. So uh, when, when people say, well, you, you're building in a press box for $31 million, that's $31 million to rebuild something. Mm -hmm. They're spending money on all new facilities. Oh, for sure. And that's not that's not to say that's how you should do it if you're going right. to do it mm -hmm. because this is this is no longer a sport. This is a big business on all levels. Hey, listen, no no question. I've said this and it it, it upset a few people in town, but I'm, I'll tell you this: you can't run an athletic department anymore like a bunch of individual charities. You have to run it like a business. It and we are starting to do that now, um, but. That's a perfect example yeah. of what it looks like when you run it like a business um, and you put so much money behind it because there's so much money to, to get there. What everyone wants us to get back to the glory days, well, you can't do the same things you did in, in back then and expect the same results now. No. You have to continue to invest and change. Um, we've started that. We're just, we're behind. But we will catch up and we're on the right track. We just, but I, I will tell you, I was really impressed with them. They had a really good team. Um, and they're only going to get better. Yeah. When we come back, we'll get some of the thoughts on what happens during game day with some of the guys that do it here on Pope Nation. Welcome back to Pope Nation. It's an honor to have Connor Bean. How you doing, my man? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Sisson AD for Game Ops. You don't have a little job. You have a big <laughs> job. Um, tell Pope Nation, obviously we just finished uh, our first home game. It takes a ton of work and preparation to go into running uh, and organizing a game. Talk about your role in game ops. Sure. So I guess kind of to start off, um, a lot of it just goes into a lot of summer preparation between uh, kind of getting the stadium ready, working with Colby and facilities, making sure our stadium gets prepped, uh, talking with officials, the conference, getting all the little minor things this year with like the conference uh, logo redesign, making sure all the patches got the football stickers, and then kind of just all the stuff leading up to it with uh, – Prepping with a horse, um, <laughs> and, uh, um, working with uh, Deep South on CO2 canisters, and just all the random little items that a lot of people either will, that we do do the pregame theatrics or even just in game, just making sure that everything runs effectively with visiting team, home mm -hmm. team, and um, just kind of leading up to the week of the game. We do a lot of communication between visiting teams, setting credentials ready, and all that. Then kind of every, every day leading up, to, um, just kind of just working outside, getting mm -hmm. stadium prep, tables and chairs moved over to. And even just you know doing horse practice on the field, working with a band on little minor objects, and just making sure everything flows right that way. Fans of your game, visiting team runs smooth, home team runs smooth, and kind of just let it roll into it. The horse practices. <laughs> the horse practices. We had four practices this year before the, before the oh, game. Oh yeah, that's a big deal, Jim. Yeah. Do you practice the cannons? Ah, uh, no, we don't. They they right. they've done it for a while. I think I think they feel comfortable with it. <laughs> I see. I think the cannons were. I think they've figured it out after forty years. <laughs> I, 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 you never know. <laughs> All right, Counter, the question I have is, how sure. much did the rain change your preparation? How much did that? Because the rain came at, what, 6.30, 6.20? Yeah, we were. Came at probably the worst possible time almost. Yeah, we were in rain delay about when visiting teams showed up about 4.30 and kind of went in and out a bunch. Rain, it pushed us back about 50, 55 minutes. Our pregame still went as neutral, um, as regular. We kind of worked with the white hat on the, of the referee and crew, the visiting team, the home team. The coaches kind of agreed on what kind of time they wanted. And, but our pregame went as sound. Um, I think our visiting teams and home team went, I think they cut their short time, I think they cut their setup time about five, 10 minutes. But other than that, everything ran as neutral, just kind of waited. We just waited an extra hour to play, but other than that, everything went as planned. Nothing got blown away? Nope, nothing got blown away. We, we did pretty well with that. We were happy with that one. Everything stayed. All the tents were there, all the signs were there. We were good. So, Connor, talk about. Um so talk about your path to McNeese. Sure. Tell, tell Pope Nation, like, where, where are you from? How did you get here, et cetera? Sure. So I'm originally from a little small town in Florida called Stewart. Uh, born and raised, grew up there my whole life. Uh, I ended up moving to North Georgia to a little private school called Reinhardt University. I uh, played lacrosse mm -hmm. there for three years, graduated during COVID. Um, during that time, I moved up to Boston. I went to Boston College for my master's program. Uh, worked in game ops, worked in for an athletic conference up there, mm -hmm. campus rec and all that kind of just to kind of feel my way in athletics. Yep. 
Um, I am getting in with the events and operations department over at in BC Athletics. Had a great time doing that, and I kind of pushed my path in athletics to where I am now. Um, after that, I moved back down to the south, moved to Charlotte. I uh, worked for UNC Charlotte for a year, and then you called me, and I came here, and I've been here for the past. <laughs> this is my second season here. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, you guys put on a, a pretty elaborate show for FCS mm -hmm. pregame. How tough is that? It's a, you guys are kind of emulating the bigger schools, aren't you? Yeah, we try to. It's fun doing all the different things between the cannons, the flyover, parapokes, yeah. which we'll have in later games, um, the CO2 cannons, just the horse. Um, it's fun because it is a lot for an FCS, and it's enjoyable because, like, between me, Colby, and our GA, Gavin, we're all of us kind of running around that first 20 minutes, even Michael. Um, he's a big help in that. We kind of all run around. It's fun to see it because I know the fans enjoy it. Even I enjoy watching every game. It's always it's always fun to watch, and you know it's a great build up and lead up to game time. You guys brought back the the horse last year. Yes, sir. What what was the fans' response to that? I felt it went really well. Um, everyone kind of loved seeing it. Both uh, both cowboys we've had have been great with it. Both horses have been amazing. Um, like I said, they've even like even with the weather on Saturday, um, our cowboy did a great job playing to the crowd and really adjusting on the fly because the horse can't really go as fast as he wanted with a slick turf. But it went really well. I feel the fans have enjoyed the mystery rider. How how'd the flyover go? Because uh, <laughs> first of all, it was supposed to come at one time, then we had the delay, and then when it came, it kind of surprised people. Yeah, so kind of uh, with the with a delay per I think it was a air, uh, where the FAA rule they couldn't they had to go at a certain time or else we couldn't have it. We kind of I know Heath and Matt Fondo kind of decided might as well have it while they're over there. We heard them kind of doing a couple laps when we were still just in lightning delay and. You could see them in the distance, but we kind of decided that, you know, while they were there, might as well have them. Um, we told the coaches they were good with it. We kind of just let it happen. The fans, right when it went over, I heard all the fans were cheering. So it was still, we were very happy we still went through with that. And I think what people, I think, you know, and I'm having you on this show, and obviously, um, or, or Michael is going to come back afterwards. But I just want, you know, Polk Nation to understand that, it, it, you know, you show up and buy your ticket and you go to the game. Yeah. But you, people have no idea the work, the time, and the lead up it takes um, to, to run a game. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard from other um, athletic directors, coaches, the referees, anything about what our game day looks like? I've had a couple of coaches. Um, the big thing, especially with the horse, because they that's it's right around the same time they come right. down. A lot of them are really excited about it. They're like, oh, that's a cool thing. I've even some schools I know that. I know Tarleton's aid, um, not Tarleton, knows um, Alcorn last year, they were very impressed by it. Even Tarleton's coach was talking to them, they liked it. So it was very cool to see other schools were very involved, especially the class I like Tarleton on Saturday. They had, they're called the Texas, they had their own cowboy there too. Yeah. I know it was cool. I know a lot of cheerleaders watched seeing the horse go around. So it was cool to see that. So I know a lot of teams have enjoyed that, yeah. And yeah, they had their own cowboy there. Yeah. People were talking about the, cow the, oh, the yeah. battle of cowboys. <laughs> when we come back, we'll continue on Polk Nation right after this. We're back, Michael McLaughlin. Director of Marketing, Fan Engagement, wants to shake my hand. Hey, for Jim. Some Couldn't even get your whole title out there. Good to see you. <laughs> what is going on? All right. So you are the guy who makes everything happen. Is that true? I guess you could say that. Yeah. Good and bad. Sure. So we can blame you and we can credit you. I guess so. So when you guys, because this is one thing I, I do ask a lot that I ask the commissioner about is, you guys put on a really good show for FCS. And really, really good show for Southland. Why has has other Southland teams reached out to you and other FCS schools reached out to you guys? Well, or are, are you do, are they doing it when they just watch you? Well, I think it becomes uh, a surprise to most people until they see it uh, in front of them. You know, it's a huge show, and I, I, we're very proud. And I'm I'm very proud to say that we put on a good show. Um, but uh, after talking with some Tarleton people. Uh, before, you know, this past week's game, uh, I've had I've had their director of marketing uh, ask about our pregame antics and, and 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 how we really do that. And you know, it's a lot of moving parts. But you know, credit to Connor with Game Ops and and, and my staff and team that we really just put on a good show. And, and it takes a village. It really does. The Michael Etts, right? The Michael Etts. <laughs> I don't know well, about that one. I'll tell you this though, Jim. Like, and we sit down. I mean, it's true. Like, we spend a lot of time um, on we our goal is and it's and it's true we have the best pregame atmosphere in fcs football 100 and uh, it's it's not even close um but it goes it's a lot of work to, about it it goes into it to be able to have a script you know like michael and i meet every game day and we go through literally per minute per 30 seconds what's coming what songs playing etc cetera, etc cetera. talk about what goes into writing a script yeah so 
it really sets that it, it helps last year that you know we got you know the kinks out of with the horse and now mm -hmm. everything is set to where we know we like it and we know what works at what time and you know when the band's playing and how long their songs are but it really comes down to what we want as an athletic department to show for our pregame but it really goes into time management with all of our songs with the band, the DJ, the timing with game operations of when football is on the field and off the field, uh, the timing of the songs that the dance teams are dancing to, what the cheerleaders are doing. You know, we have to work with a lot of people to figure mm -hmm. out what those specific times are and write it down and put it in the script. And, you know, a lot of things happen on game day, and uh, you, you would want to say that – you, everything runs perfectly all the time, and if everyone follows the script to a T, it'll go perfect. Right. But that's not necessarily always the case. But uh, it helps a lot to uh, have the team that we have and mm -hmm. and know the expectations of you know we're going to put on a good show. Right. Sometimes it rains 25 minutes before taking the field. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, that was definitely a bummer with the uh, with the pregame delay. But uh, I think we made it work to the best of our mm -hmm. ability. Mm -hmm. How much do you listen to fans a a as far as planning for the next year, or how much do you want to add something every year? I mean, I, I think we always want to make it bigger. We want to keep fans coming back, always really wanting more. And, you know, it's, it's, it, we're in the entertainment business, as Heath likes to say, and uh, we, always, we always want to make it a, it's a big, big show. And it's more than just uh, a football game. Mm -hmm. It's a game day experience. And um, I think it's really important to always, you know, want to keep going more and, and, and showing we can always do more. Um, and I like to I – like engage with fans you know via social media and, and see what they really like and we posted stuff on McNeese football accounts of what's the what's your favorite tradition at McNeese football you know with pair pokes and the cannons and the mystery rider but um, I really think the mystery rider is something phenomenal you know having a, a live horse on the field in college not football the, no, not at this level. and I think we do it really really well and that is something that consistently will always be over the top for our pregame um, shows and I, I really truly believe that fans look forward to that every single game. Okay, Michael. So let's we talked about talked with Connor earlier. Um, you're an LSU grad. Yes, sir. Okay. Talk Sorry. about your path. Yep. So uh, I'm born and raised in Metairie, Louisiana, and I went to college at LSU. I was in Tiger Band for four years at LSU, and um, I really think that that helps me in my job mm -hmm. path right now within marketing because I have a phenomenal relationship with our band here, and I, I really know what it feels like to be on the other side. Right. And I know what it feels like to be delegated uh, from someone on the marketing team, so uh, I really use that, and I think that's one of my strengths uh, in a position here, mm -hmm. especially with building a good relationship with the band. Um, and then I graduated um, at LSU May 2022, and I applied to be a graduate assistant here at McNeese. Got that job here. Had some things shuffle around. <laughs> Next man up. And uh, yep. Coach Schroer well, called me up, and uh, here I am. Well, it's funny, Jim. So Jim Green was the director of marketing and left to go to Rice in the middle of football season. Yeah. So I brought Michael in, and I said, okay, you're up. You run the game. And he's a GA at the time. And I said, look, it's your job to lose. And if we can roll this thing and you prove that you can do the job, I'm not going to post a job. I'm going to I'm going to hire you. And sure enough, he just knocked it out of the park, and he has been ever since. Are you that good? He's really he good. He believes in me. He's uh, really good. Like well, if he really believes good. it, because he's the one who hands out all the jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> we have a great team, though, Jim. Honestly, and, and Connor mentioned. No, you put it, on a Michael, really good show. I, 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 I kid you guys a lot, but we have a great as far team. as going to other FCSs, especially, you put yeah. on an FBS show in FCS. One hundred percent. When we come back, we'll get Coach's final thoughts this week on Poke Nation. We're back, and I, it's an interesting thing what you guys do in pregame. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a show, for which sure. Is Kind of interesting. I don't really get into the cannons, but that's just everybody else. I do like the horse. I, the yeah. horse, and, and because of where we sit right now in the Cowboy Club, we get an up-close look at the horse. Mm -hmm. Where Before, in the old days, I used to have to log it down. I was like, I don't get the horse. Now I kind of get the horse. Horses are bigger than I thought because I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a metro it, guy. I don't, I don't. It, it, you, you laugh, but we did. We practiced four times with the horse. Two, Two times with the horse by itself, and then we brought the band out there twice with the kickers and did the and, and practice with them so that, and then you know then we did it with the music on so that the horse was familiar with yeah. with their surroundings and. Uh, well, it's not Mr. Ed. He's not going to tell you what's going on. I mean, <laughs> come on. No, but I'm telling you the the biggest thing you have to do is you got to get a real cowboy. 
Like those that I mean, those cowboys. over yeah. people and have band members right. <laughs> scattered throughout the field <laughs> right. as you go. Uh, we talked. We touched a little bit on this um, about the money issues, but I want to get into the money issue. What you see is money issues in the FBS level. Mm -hmm. We see Duke beating Clemson. Mm -hmm. Florida State has come up with they, they had money problems. They solved them. Now all of a sudden they're good again. Um, is do you see this as? As the tele SEC is 0-3 against Power three, power 5s, mm -hmm. is there a shift in the money because now we're seeing more money go to other conferences and that's why other conferences are rising up? Is it all about money? It's all about money. I mean, at the end of the day, it's and that goes with facilities. and But I think NIL has changed everything too. Um, you know, if, you, if you're a kid and Clemson, all, you know, Clemson's NIL package isn't as great as Duke, you're going to go to Duke. Yeah, and now all of a sudden, so it just comes down. So when you say, "Is it all about money?" It, for sure, it's about money. Um, and you know, people can laugh about Deion Sanders and all that. And but he said something that was I thought was really true in today's world. Well, he said some wild things too. So for sure, watch, watch, but, but, but he watch did, which one you're repeating. But, but he did say, and I'm going to paraphrase that. You know, you want to get mad at the kid where all these other schools are chasing the bag too. You know, Stanford and Cal are going to the ACC. Yeah. I mean, and all, you know, UCLA and 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 USC left to go. Like that would have never happened ten years never ago. Happened. But it, it is now because of money. Yeah. So um, I, I think that you're going to see even more and more parity uh, in in college football. I think it's great for the sport. I really do. Um, you know, for Duke, Duke would have never beat Clemson five, ten years ago. Never. Um, but with the new TV revenue and now with NIL, anything can happen. Okay, you're playing a money game this week. Mm -hmm. um, you have money games with LSU, Texas A&M next year. Mm -hmm. LSU coming up twice. Yep. Uh, although I, the 2029, I don't know if you'll have that game. We'll have to see okay. what the landscape looks like then. But are you concerned on this level of having those games down the road? For sure. I think that you know every athletic director and every administrator – uh, and FCS football is going to tell you the same thing. We're worried about that um, when the next, you know, TV contracts and that collective bargaining happens. Where do you get those games? Like we're going to Florida for half a million. Um, where do you make that up in your in your budget? Um, so it's for sure. It's it is a uh, it's something we think about a lot. I think about a lot and. You know, we just have to continue to generate um, revenue and find different ways to generate revenue. And, and honestly, I spend the majority of my day on that. Would you play two game, two of these games in a year? Or I would. Is that too much? I would. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially Gary Goff. Um, yeah, I mean, Gary and I have had very open conversations about that. Um, especially if it's, you know, if it's, uh, I don't know, tech and UL. You know what I mean? Like if it's something like yeah. that, for sure. Um, but I, I think on certain years, um, especially maybe 12, 12 game seasons, I think you have to look at that. Yeah, I always wondered about that because it's a, you're, you're a fine line. Is it better to play somebody at home that's on your level? Is it better for the program to go out and play a UTEP like UIW did? Is it better to go out and play Florida? And, and would you rather play that as an opener, if possible? Um, I, I, I don't. I'm not against playing it as an opener and you just get it out of the way. Um, but I think that, um, you know, if, if, you're, if we can consistently, and here's the argument, if we can consistently get 16, 15, 16, 17,000 people into the hole, which we haven't done in a long time, yeah. now you have the argument to say, okay, we're going to make X amount of dollars per game. Maybe we don't have to go play that second money game or what have you. So that, that is the argument. But what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You have to get the money in or into the program in order to, to, to get the players and have the things you need to win. So, you know, it's the same old thing, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. And real quick, we, I talked to Gary Goff yesterday a little bit. I asked him this. Would you like to see a scrimmage before a college football season or, or at least uh, joint workouts? I would love that. I, I, I always liked it as a basketball coach. I think it's. Uh, I think it'd be really beneficial. I'm not a football coach, but um, I personally think it'd be very beneficial. It, it seems like that's one thing is it it, it works on the NFL level. It mm -hmm. seems so. It would be a good idea. Well, next week we're gonna have be talk about Florida game. You get, <laughs> you get a trip to Gainesville. I'm coach. going to Gainesville.
We'll see you next week on Poke Nation. Don't forget to watch CBS Lake Charles. And don't forget, Pokecast every Wednesday night.